What's up guys, my name is Ace, and it's that awkward time of the year as an FPS YouTuber where we've got some great titles coming out soon, like Vanguard, Battlefield 2042, and Halo Infinite. And all the games I've been playing lately have really started to feel stale, and I don't have that much interest in diving into them too deep, and therefore it's the perfect time of the year for me to branch out and try some new things. And I found out that Insurgency Sandstorm, which is a game that's been around for a few years on PC, it has just come to console earlier this week. So I picked it up, and I've been playing it on my PS5. And in today's video, I just wanted to share my initial thoughts and impressions of this game, coming from somebody who has not played this on PC. This is my first ever experience with this game, and it was on console. So for anybody that has been playing this game for years, please excuse any ignorance throughout this video. I am brand new to this game and I'm gonna share my early initial impressions on the console build of the game playing on a PS5, which is important and I'll mention why in a little bit. So for those that don't know, Insurgency Sandstorm is a tactical shooter. This is not a super arcade style game. This isn't like Call of Duty or anything. This is meant to be played a little bit more slower, methodically, and tactically. And with this, there's two main experiences. There's the co-op, which is a PvE experience. So it's you and a squad of other real people, which by the way, I'm actually pretty impressed with the way that the bots move and everything in this. They never really peek the same angle twice, I find. And that's refreshing compared to if you play like a Call of Duty campaign, for instance, you'll have the bots just peeking the same angle over and over again. So if you miss shooting them and they take cover, you just pre-aim where they were peeking the last time and they're gonna re-peek that. That doesn't seem to happen with this game at all, so it definitely keeps you on your toes, and even in that PvE experience, it's fairly tense and there's not a lot of room for error. Now that's not to say that the bots are extremely difficult to kill or anything like that. They're fairly easy to kill, but sometimes they will surprise you and take you off guard, and you really have to be aware of that. Now in the PvE experience that I've been playing at least, what you do is you work your way through a very large map, going from objective to objective, and each objective is going to be a little different. Sometimes you have to capture a building, and then you have to defend that building for a wave of enemies, like for a certain period of time while enemies attack it. And then other times you have to go and like plant a bomb, for instance, and blow up an objective. So that's the co-op mode that I've experienced so far, and honestly, this is where I've gotten the most enjoyment out of this game. I actually find it to be quite fun and relatively relaxing, even though you do have to be on and aware of things, because like I said, there's not a whole lot of room for error. It's relatively relaxing to play this, and it would be great to play with friends as well. Now, as for the PvP, I haven't played a ton of PvP. I've only played a few matches, and in those matches, I've generally played pretty well. Like, I actually led the lobby a couple times, and every game I've played so far, I've at least been in the top half of the scoreboard. So it's not like I'm playing completely terrible, even though I am a noob, I am new to this, I don't know all the maps and the angles and the lines of sight and everything. But having said that, I just think the PvP experience is a little bit too tactical for my tastes. And what I mean by that is, it's just slow, and I feel like a lot of the PvP experience seems to just come down to watching lanes and waiting potentially for a decently long period of time before somebody comes into your sights and then you pick them off. For Call of Duty players out there, I would say the PvP experience in this is kind of like hardcore game modes on steroids, so time to kill is super fast, especially with a headshot. I believe most, if not all, guns kill in one single bullet to the head, and then it's only a few shots to kill to the body as well, in my experience. And on top of this, there's an extremely limited heads up display. So like you don't have a mini map or anything like we'd see in Call of Duty, you have a compass. And also there are no hit indicators in this game at all. So when you shoot somebody, you've got to look for that red mist. I believe there's a nice red mist if you get a headshot. I don't think you get that same sort of red mist with body shots, but basically you shoot until you actually see the character model go down. So for anybody that likes a super immersive, tactical, semi-realistic experience out of a shooter, this is a great game for that. It may not be a full-on milsim, but it definitely leans pretty far in that direction. So yeah, that's my like overall general take on the modes. Personally, I had a lot more fun playing the PvE co-op experience and working my way through bots and playing it methodically like that. When it comes to PvP, I prefer a much faster paced shooter like Call of Duty, and that's 100% just down to preference. Next up, I want to talk a bit more about the gameplay mechanics themselves. The first thing I noticed while playing this is the audio is incredible when it's not bugged out. I have had a few bugs on the console version of the game. I don't know if this is something that appears on the PC version as well, but on the console version, I've noticed sometimes my gun has literally zero audio when I fire it, but usually if I die and respawn, then it fixes itself and it's totally fine. 
Also, sometimes it seems like the environmental audio, so like wind or like anything you'd expect to hear in the environment, that also completely cuts out and there's just no audio whatsoever. But aside from those bugs, the audio is great in this game. The footstep audio sounds perfect. You can hear those footsteps coming, but there's actual proper occlusion to the footsteps. So you're not going to hear footsteps super clearly through walls or through an entire building or anything like that. But the fidelity on them is great. You can also hear like if a grenade lands next to you, we don't get grenade indicators in this game. You have to rely on that audio. So it's a very immersive experience and you definitely want to have a good headset while playing this game based on my experience with this at least. Additionally, the amount of weaponry that you have access to is crazy. There are so many different guns. You can go in the firing range area and just test out all the different weapons. Lots of different attachments you can put on them as well. There is a good amount of recoil in this game. Even when you stack a gun up with recoil attachments, there's a decent amount of recoil there that you need to control. And especially with a controller, it can be difficult at times. But I have found that generally switching over to semi-automatic mode and just tap firing everything, that tends to be the way to go in my experience. Now speaking of the controller, let's talk about those controller settings a little bit. And I'm somebody that is pretty picky when it comes to the feel of an FPS game on a controller. And I feel that so many FPS games that started on PC and they get ported over to console or they get ported over to controller, they just tend to do a terrible job and everything just feels clunky and really bad on a controller. And I'm happy to say with Insurgency Sandstorm, my experience has been pretty good with a controller so far. Now, I don't feel like I have as much control as I would in Call of Duty. I still feel like Call of Duty sort of sets the bar when it comes to controller handling in an FPS game. So I would say that this doesn't feel quite as good as that to me. But I have few complaints when it comes to this. There are some situations where it feels maybe a little on the clunky side. And honestly, even as somebody that primarily plays on a controller, I think I would probably play a lot better on a mouse and keyboard in this game. And that's primarily due to the mechanics, where headshots are extremely important, and I'd be able to snap onto a headshot a lot more effectively and faster with a mouse and keyboard compared to a controller. But also the high recoil of these weapons. It would be much easier to control this with a mouse, I feel. But like I said, in general at least, I'm pretty impressed with how this game handles and feels on a controller. And finally, I did want to talk a little bit about the fact that I am playing this on PS5, and that's a very important distinction. And the reason for this is on the older generation of consoles, so PlayStation 4 as well as Xbox One, including the pro versions of those consoles, this game is currently capped at 30 FPS based on what I've read. And to me, that's a deal breaker. I will not play a first person shooter at 30 FPS anymore. It literally gives me headaches. I just, I can't handle it. I can't get past that. So if I didn't have a PS5, honestly, there's no way I would have bought this game. And I don't think I would recommend this game for people that are on PS4 or Xbox One. Unless, of course, you are somebody that's used to playing games at 30 FPS and it's not a big deal to you, then by all means, go ahead. Having said this, on PS5, even though I'm still playing the PS4 version of the game since the next gen versions aren't out, on PS5 I can at least play this at 60 FPS. And while it didn't seem like it was a perfectly consistent and steady 60 FPS, I definitely was getting some frame drops here or there. It was at least very tolerable, I didn't get a headache from playing it, and I didn't really notice any severe issues with the frame rate and general performance playing on PS5. And with that, that's gonna wrap it up for my quick initial impressions of Insurgency Sandstorm on console. Overall, I definitely see myself playing this from time to time, especially playing that co-op PvE experience. I have a lot of fun playing that. However, the PvP just doesn't really do it for me, and I don't think I'm going to be invested enough to really properly put the time in to learn all the maps and all the angles and the routes and everything. I don't think I'm willing to invest that much time to learn all of that stuff, and without knowing all of that, it's quite difficult to get into it since it is such a hardcore tactical sort of shooter. So I doubt I will ever really play PvP again in this game. But as a PvE experience, especially if you have some friends that love playing like tactical FPS games and you want to play it together, the PvE is great and I would highly recommend this as long as you're not on an older generation of console. At the end of the day though, if you are somebody that has a decent enough gaming PC, I would probably stay away from the console version of this and just get it on PC. Like I said, even as somebody that primarily plays with a controller, I know that I would be much better with a mouse and keyboard in this particular game at snapping onto those heads and getting those quick kills compared to playing the console version on a controller. Now of course these are just my opinions and initial impressions of this game based on fairly limited playtime. 
I'd like to know in the comment section below. For anybody that's tried the console version of this game so far, what are you thinking about it? And if you haven't played it yet, are you interested in checking it out, or do you think it's just going to be a pass for you? If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.